Okay. And go. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Atlee and I'm so glad you found this video. If you are here, it's probably because you or someone you love has just went through, is going through, or thinks they might have to go through an invasive spinal surgery. And you're just wondering, what the heck is it like? In my previous video, I chatted with you all about my injury history, the surgery that I got, and why I decided to go ahead with surgery. In this video, we are going to talk all things surgery prep. So all the things I recommend you do before the hospital to make the hospital experience and also your experience coming back home, less of a shock and all that more enjoyable for you. I'm going to share with you some insider tips on what you should buy, prepare, and how you should surgery proof your home before you go into your surgery. Now, I pretty much learned all of these tips after the fact, and these are all things that would have seriously helped me if I would have known them before. So I'm so honored to be able to share these with you today and hopefully help you guys have a much more seamless and peaceful experience than maybe I had. So without further ado, let's get into the 10 most important things you need to do when prepping for your spinal surgery. Surgery proof your home. After you get out of surgery, you're gonna be able to basically do nothing. And trust me on this, you're gonna be able to do nothing. Here's a list of a few things you will not be able to do after your spinal surgery. Shower yourself, dress yourself, put on your own socks, put on your own shoes, put it in tampons, sit down on the toilet, cook for yourself, do your own laundry, brush your own hair, wash your own hair, brush your own teeth, drive, have sex, bend, lift, or twist, Put lotion on your legs, put your hands above your head, work, play or care for any animals or children, take a bath, go up multiple steps, turn your neck, put your neck up and down, look down at your food when you're eating, can't do that. Can't shave basically anything, but especially not your legs. Writing and reading are really hard. And this of course goes without saying, but no exercise of any kind besides slow and steady safe walking. And this is just a list that I came up with. I'm sure you guys after your surgery will come up with countless other things that you realize you couldn't do. So being as prepared as possible for this stage of immobility is really going to help your life so much. Make sure that you prep as much food, snacks, and drinks as you can before you even leave to the hospital. Lunches, breakfast, dinner, all of them. Make sure you make good batches of these before you go in. I was really happy to have a bunch of water, like huge water bottles from Trader Joe's and also some coconut waters and a bunch of my favorite snacks with me because after surgery, you're groggy, you're sensitive, their food kind of sucks. They don't bring you water really enough. I mean, it's hard, it's a hospital. They have people to serve. So if you want that type of stuff, I would just bring that with you and the coconut water and water, especially because like I said, you get like little cups of water and they can't come fill it all the time because they're busy. So the more you can be hydrating after your surgery to help cleanse your body of all the toxins that you just put in it from the medications, the better. So I would highly recommend you get some nice comforting snacks and some water, some juices, maybe some smoothies and stuff to have with you in your room for the next couple days while you're in the hospital. You can make pre-made sandwiches, smoothies, pastas, soups. I mean, the list goes kind of on and on, but the more of those that you could make, and what I did is I made prep cooked a lot of food and then I took it all and put it into little containers in the freezer and the fridge. Now you even wanna be careful on the type of containers that you use because literally just opening a jar or unpackaging like a difficult lid or even opening potato chips is hard for you after spinal surgery. You literally can't do that. So the more you can prepackage your food in smaller, easy to open containers that are easier for you to reach. So somewhere in the fridge that's like eye level or no lower than hip level, because again, you won't be able to bend 
or look for anything, nor will you really want to be reaching very high. So all snacks and sort of unperishable food should be put on the counter in front of you where you can easily reach it. And then all of your prepared meals, just make sure you can open the containers and that they're somewhere that you can clearly see in your fridge and freezer. So like I said, you're not gonna be able to lift very many things. So even for me after the surgery, lifting just a carton of juice or a carton of milk was kind of difficult and didn't feel very good. So for the first maybe like week to two weeks, my caretaker who was incredible would actually portion out you know, my nut milks or my juice or whatever it is into smaller containers that I could just take out of the fridge. That way I didn't have to ask her for a bunch of things throughout the day. It seems like a lot up front, but in the long run, the less you have to ask people for help, just like the better you're gonna feel and the easier time your caretaker's gonna have because they're already gonna be helping you do literally everything else. So the more you can prepare up front to cut down on the back end of asking for help, the better. Also, one of my friends was kind enough to set up a food delivery service for me. So this might be a good idea for you as well. And how this works is basically people can go on to a site. I'll link the site that she used below, but I think there's like probably hundreds of these type of sites. You go on and you make a surgery schedule. So people know when you're going to be getting your surgery and when you'd be needing food. Your friends and family can then go on and sign up for a day that they would deliver food to your house. So they could do this by ordering through the site, which my site you could order things like stir fries or soups mostly, just like simple things. But you also could sign up for that same sheet and say you're gonna deliver a Seamless or an Uber Eats or something to the house. And actually a lot of my friends, which I found really, really helpful was they actually ordered groceries to my house. And that was probably my favorite thing because you know, you don't always love what everybody orders for you, but if they know kind of what you like to eat and they can just order you a week's worth of groceries, it's like, Perfect. Definitely check into that too because it was a big help for me and it'd probably be an extremely amazing resource for you as well. Honestly, one of the hardest things for me post-op, besides just the pain and stuff, was, was actually asking people for help. This is something that you're going to have to get over pretty quickly because you have no option, but it is difficult. It is difficult to ask for help. In a similar and not so glamorous light, when you have to poo, because you will, you might have to get someone to help you wipe. Now I kind of like refused this in my mind. I just kind of made the decision that that was something that would never happen for me at this age. Um, but if that has to happen for you and you just can't do it, then no shame in the game. Just call a nurse and someone will help you. I know some people actually bought like small little grabbers and would tie toilet paper around those and do it themselves. I was able to like really, really slowly do it myself um, it's not fun. That kind of terrible stage lasts for like maybe two weeks and then it gets a little bit easier, but it isn't, it is, it isn't easy. It is weird. And if you have to ask someone to help you, then just ask. In the same vein of making drinking and eating easier for yourself, you also want to make sure that silverware and plates and any other like kitchen utensils or devices that you use on a daily or weekly basis are also easy for you to grab. So this could be like a toaster, a blender, um, like I said, any silverware, any mugs, favorite mugs that you like, cups, bowls, etc. Just have them all set out on the counter so you don't have to be like reaching or pulling anything down or twisting to get something out of a drawer. It'll really help a lot if you if you do this before. This can also include toiletries or anything you use in the bathroom or the shower. So before you leave for surgery, I recommend pulling all that out and putting it on the counter, maybe even grabbing like a little stool. You can buy these stools anywhere like Amazon, Target, whatever. I'll do some links below as well and putting everything on there. So it's just easy for you to literally reach and take whatever you need. Same with the shower, anything that you need to reach, make sure it's just literally right here. No bending, lifting or twisting involved and you can just grab whatever the thing is. Make sure before you leave for the hospital, you go around your house and you set up comfy places for you to sit all around the house. So a comfy place for you to sit in your bed, a comfy place for you to sit in the living room, a comfy place for you to eat your food, a comfy place for you to sit, I don't know, if you have a basement. Whatever you have, just make sure that every one of those places, it's easier for you to sit down in, get up in, and you have to think when you're doing this before surgery, just really try to imagine what it will be like when you have very little 
strength. So in your living room, for example, have a place where you have a little side table or something by you. So food can go there, drinks can go there, any devices or remote controls, music, anything you might want, a book, a magazine, everything just kind of set out for you. So you're not coming home from surgery like, mom, can you get my, hey, can you do my, like nobody wants to be doing that. Make sure you get all of your post-surgery gadgets. Check in with your insurance beforehand and make sure you're approved to get all the following before you go into surgery. A toilet seat riser. Now I put this as number one because this is probably the most important thing that you'll get. Well, maybe besides your back brace. But it's pretty important and it's something I never would have thought about until they offered it to me. But it was something that I used for probably a month after having the surgery. They're just like these big plastic things. They gave me one at the hospital for free because was, it was covered by my insurance. But again, if it's not, I'll link below. You can get these on Amazon and different places. I also know that some churches and even some convalescent homes will sell or give these to you. So maybe check into other community organizations if you don't want to buy one. Next would be a grabber. Now this little guy, super, super helpful. I mostly used it to get things off of high shelves and to also just pick up my clothes or other things that I would drop on the ground that I couldn't pick up to get. So this is super cheap. I bought this myself. I don't think that insurance, I mean, maybe you have amazing insurance and it covers this, but my hospital didn't offer it for me and I just bought it for myself. So make sure you get this because you're definitely gonna use this as well. Next would be your back brace. Now this back brace is gonna be your best friend for like three to six months. It's very ugly. There's nothing you can do to make it cute, but you just have to be okay with that. The back brace you should get on your last day before you're discharged. Hopefully someone will come in, a physical therapist or somebody else. They'll give you a back brace and they'll help fit it to you. Then you can walk around in it and just make sure that it feels okay. And you'll wear this basically every day when you're up and moving for the first three months. Uh, and then after that, you're only required, at least I was only required to wear it during, you know, intense physical activity. Or even if I was just cleaning the house or trying to do laundry, going for a long walk and doing my PT exercises, then I would put this on and wear that the whole time as well. I will also say to go along with the back brace. You want to make sure you have a lot of comfy, easy to put on and off clothes, mostly like leggings for guys, probably like more athleisure type, tighter sweats or something. It's, you can't really wear much with it. Jeans don't really feel good for you to wear for literally three months. So the comfier and maybe cuter sort of athleisure clothes that you can buy that make you feel kind of good about yourself because you're honestly not gonna be feeling that good about yourself after the surgery. You're gonna be uncomfortable. You're gonna feel sad. You're gonna have all these different emotions. I mean, you might feel great, but it's also nice to kind of treat yourself and feel good about yourself so you don't feel like a complete slob for like six months. Next would be a reading lamp. I did not get a reading lamp before my surgery, but after my surgery, it was something that I really wish I had. And here's why. When you're laying in bed, it's gonna be very hard for you to well, you're not even supposed to turn over and turn off a light. So if you have a little battery powered light that can just be on your book or whatever, your journal or whatever else you're using in bed, it'd be super helpful. And then you don't have to get out of bed, in and out of bed to turn off the light. You also don't have to ask someone to turn off the light for you. It would just, it's just like a quick and easy and expensive hack it'll make your life a lot easier after surgery. In that same vein, I also did not have this, but after everything went down, I kind of felt like I would have liked it. And this would be one of those tray tables that you have when you're laying in bed. And I would have loved this to actually use to read and to write, because even just holding something up, you're so weak and sensitive that it's, it's pretty difficult to do that after surgery. So I'll link some different options of these little like tray table things below. They even have ones that can come higher and kind of hold your book up for you. And I really wish I had these while I was recovering. And so potentially you guys might love to have these too. Next would be reusable ice packs and a heating pad. Now, both of these things are gonna be invaluable. And if you don't already have these pre-surgery, most of us do because we've been in chronic pain for so long. So I'm sure most of you already have an ice pack that you can lay down on, some different ice packs that wrap around you that you can walk around the house with. And you probably also have a heating pad additionally for the pain. But if you don't, I link some of those below. And 
definitely get your hands on these before the surgery. I will say that you do have to get your surgeon's approval to start either cold or hot therapy. So before you leave the hospital, I would just ask your surgeon or your surgery team or maybe even the nurse when you're allowed to start using hot and cold therapy and do that as soon as possible because it will just really help take down the inflammation from all that you just went through. Another thing that I'll link below, my aunt and uncle actually bought me this constant ice machine, I think it's called. I don't know, it's a constant ice pack. And it's like a little cooler that you fill with ice and water and you hook yourself up to a tube and you can strap it on your body and just sit with that on you for hours as you watch TV, maybe even when you're taking a short nap or something. And this little gadget, I use this guy probably every single day for six months, no joke. I would use him usually in bed before I went to sleep while I was reading or maybe watching a show or something. And this helped out take down my inflammation, I mean, tenfold. You, you're gonna have so much inflammation from them cutting you open and just all the trauma that happened in that area. The more ice and stuff you can get on that to really take that down, the less stiff you're gonna feel, the easier it will be to fall asleep and walk around your house and just keep your momentum going. It really helps to be icing constantly. So this was cool because you could put this on, since it has a constant ice water flow, it can be cold for hours. So you don't have to keep switching out ice packs. The next little gadget, and it's very obscure, and I didn't even know about this until I had spinal surgery, is a kidney dish. Kidney dishes are like this, and I'll link some below, and the hospital provides them for you. And basically what you use these little guys for is when you brush your teeth, again, you're not gonna be able to bend down and spit in the sink like you normally would. So these are really helpful because you brush your teeth and you can just spit right in there and then rinse it in the sink when you're done. The hospital provided one for me, it obviously was covered. They just gave it to me. I'm sure you'll get one as well, but if not, just make sure you ask. And they also allowed me to take that home. And I use that honestly, probably for three months as well. In addition, I will say the two most difficult daily practices that I found for myself that were really hard after surgery were washing my face and then shaving my legs. Obviously guys don't have to worry about Maybe neither if you don't wash your face, but if you do either of those things, washing your face is so hard. I couldn't lean down and wash my face probably for a good four months without feeling scared and uncomfortable and without obviously bending, lifting, or twisting. So what I did is I bought those little like facial wipes. Again, I'll link some little options for you guys below. You just wet those in the water like this, take everything off and you're done. Super easy, simple, and no bending or lifting or twisting involved. And then for shaving your legs, this basically never gets easier. I'm now 10 months post-op, and I now am just starting to be able to shave my legs and actually get all the hair without hurting myself. But for months, and specifically the first three months, I literally just could not shave my legs. It's, it's, it's a motion that you literally cannot do without bending your spine. So my boyfriend at the time was nice enough to do it a few times for me. He would do it like once a week and then I just had hairy legs. And if you just want to rock the hairy legs the whole time, then by all means go for it. Anytime that you do it, now's the time. And everybody else can just deal with it. I also would say make sure you have a good water bottle. So this is a water bottle that probably holds about, I don't know, 40 to 60 ounces or so something that has a top that you can open but that also closes because generally you're going to have this water bottle in the bed with you and you're going to be constantly falling asleep and you don't want to spill water all over yourself so again hydrating is super super important in this process for your recovery also to help kind of cleanse your liver and kidney and pancreas and where all those toxins and drugs kind of sit in your body after surgery you should probably double or triple your water intake leading up to the surgery and, and again for the first three to six months after the surgery. Okay, and my last little gadget or thing that you definitely need to buy before your surgery is a body pillow. I'm gonna link the body pillow that I got after surgery below. I did not get this pillow until maybe a month after my surgery and I was like, why did he wait so long? It is a lifesaver, game changer. Sleeping is going to be super uncomfortable, super weird when you get out of surgery. You're not going to want to sleep on your back because obviously you have an open wound right there. You're not going to want to sleep on the side where you got the surgery because it's really sensitive. The other side, you're going to kind of move around, twist around, and you're going to wake up with new pain. 
none of this is good. So these big, huge body pillows, you kind of like straddle them in a way and they hold you in place for the whole night so you can wake up with no pain. This is my favorite thing that I bought from surgery. And I mean, if you have a partner, my ex-boyfriend did get kind of annoyed with me being in the bed because there was no way to really cuddle with me. But I mean, your spinal health is really the most important thing at this moment. So they're just gonna have to deal with it. I'm 10 months post-op and I still use mine every single night and I swear by it, love it. Sleep is so important for your recovery. So this little guy will really help you out. The other thing that I highly, highly recommend in this same vein, is to buy that stool that I talked about earlier from the bathroom, maybe buy two of them, maybe even buy three of them and use one to eat. So this is something that nobody told me and I, I never would have thought about this, but after you get the surgery, you really don't even feel like you can do this. Like you don't even think you can do that and you don't even feel like you can do this. And you have to turn like this, literally. You're going like, this is how you move. So when you're eating, if you think about it, Usually you look at your food, right? You know where your fork is going. Get a little stool. And what you do is you literally put the stool on the table, sits right here, your plate of food sits right here, and you can just very easily feed yourself without making too big of a mess. So that's a little hack that I didn't realize till a few days after surgery. And now it's like something that I would recommend to literally everyone. Prep and organize all of your clothes that you'll be using during the surgery at the hospital, but also prep clothes at your home for when you come home. So before leaving for the hospital, make sure you think about what clothes you would like to wear when you get back from the hospital. Pull those out of drawers, set them up on a dresser, somewhere that's super easy for you to grab. This could be sweats, sweaters, if you live in a hot place, obviously like tank tops, shorts, but everything that's very easy for you to put on and off without having to do a whole lot of this type of stuff. And anything on the bottom, that's very easy for you to slide up your own leg or easy for somebody else to put on you because truth is for the first week, somebody else is gonna be dressing you. And then for the hospital, also bring really comfy, easy to take on and put on clothes. I only brought things with zippers or like buttons. I even brought sweats that had like zippers on the side so that they could become really big and like were easy for my boyfriend at the time to help put on me because I couldn't really put those on myself. Another thing I would say is if you have a tendency to get pretty cold, I think most girls get a little colder, bring like a big comfy sweater that you can wear inside your hospital bed because for pretty much the full four days, you're going to be wearing a hospital gown. So it gets kind of chilly. Another thing I would say is just make sure that your sweats either fit you, you know, high or somewhere where they don't touch your, in like where your incision was or where your um, stitches are going to be because that's will be really irritating to you uh, after the surgery if that's like hitting directly on where that is. So my sweats were pretty high and very loose and didn't have anything that would irritate my incision. And then I would kind of say don't worry about underwear because I mean, bring it, but they're going to put you in hospital underwear, which you're going to end up actually kind of loving because they're like really big and like super comfy and they fit really high and they like don't irritate your incision at all. So just good to know, like you'll be good in that department. And as far as bras, if you're a woman with bigger breasts and you do have to wear a bra, I would just make sure you bring something that's really soft and wouldn't irritate you at all. Cause you're going to be very, very sensitive this time. So anything with underwire and stuff, it's like not going to be the vibe. So just be ready to use a pad. I had not used, I had not put a pad on since, like, I don't even think I ever wore pads actually. Pretty sure I went straight to tampons like a boss. But anyways, if you use pads, no judgment there. But if you don't, it's a little bit unnerving to have to use one again. Also, you're not gonna be able to change your own pad because you just don't have the ability to really like bend your spine enough to get down there and get it out and change everything. So my boyfriend at the time, bless his heart, had no problem changing my period pads, but I just want to let you know that that might be something that you have to ask someone to do. If you don't have someone with you that you're comfortable with them doing that for you, obviously nurses literally were trained for this and don't mind at all, I'm assuming. So feel free to just push a little button and reach out to a nurse and let them know that you need your pad changed because we're women and we bleed. So once you've packed your clothes and your food and your snacks and everything, also maybe think about bringing a book, maybe a computer. I did bring 
books, journals. I did not have the energy to write or read at all. All I could do was like watch trash TV for a little while and then just pass back out again. But if you think you might want to do those things, definitely bring them so that you have the options. Of course, I also brought a toothbrush, toothpaste, face wash, deodorant, and all those other bathroom type essentials. I also brought earplugs and a face mask because as we all know, hospitals are not really storing places and it's very bright and it can oftentimes be a little bit loud. So I did that just so I could sleep. For my surgery, I was in the hospital for three days and two nights. I had the option to stay for an additional night, but I chose not to. That was just something that I felt was right for me. But if you have to stay an additional night or if you just don't feel comfortable going home yet, then just tell them and just stay. You want to do what's comfortable for you and you obviously can discuss that at the time with your surgery team. Okay, so that's it for pre and post surgery prep and proofing. I hope you guys got a lot out of this. Of course, you'll have to check with your doctor as far as what medications and vitamins you can be on pre-surgery, during surgery, and after surgery. And just make sure you ask whatever questions you might have on what you should and shouldn't do both pre and post surgery from your doctor so that you can enter into your surgery feeling as calm and at peace as possible. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.